In today's political climate, running a campaign for political office is an expensive endeavor. Financial contributions to candidates or political parties come from many sources. Some limits have been placed on contributions, such as those enacted in 2002, but loopholes still exist. For example, in the 2004 presidential election, tax-exempt committees raised millions of dollars to try to influence the election. Donors usually expect to receive some benefit, such as favored treatment in future legislative issues. Supporters of contribution limits aim to equalize the access to politics for the rich and poor. Opponents claim that the First Amendment guarantees their right to support whomever they choose. The very green bottom line is this, money talks, and often it talks loudly in the political arena. Federal agencies such as the Federal Aviation Agency and the Federal Trade Commission and the Bureau of Land Management have the power to make regulations. Agencies were and are created to fulfill a need. Someone needs to oversee changing technologies and practices and their effects on society. An agency is created when Congress passes enabling legislation, which describes a problem and, and defines the agency's powers. Agencies often have considerable power in their areas of specialty, sometimes leading to controversy. The Administrative Procedure Act regulates agencies in an attempt to reduce controversy. Hiller Systems Incorporated was performing a safety inspection on board the Cape Diamond, an ocean-going vessel, when an accident occurred involving the fire extinguishing equipment. Two men were killed. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA, a federal agency, attempted to investigate, but Hiller refused to permit any of its employees to speak to OSHA investigators. What could OSHA do to pursue the investigation, and what limits were there on OSHA? OSHA could and did issue a subpoena requiring Hiller employees who knew of the incident to testify at an OSHA investigatory hearing. The principal limits on the subpoena are that it be within the authority of the agency and reasonably relevant to some investigation. In this case, the court, the court held that OSHA's subpoena was a valid exercise of its power within its area of expertise, worker safety. Executive federal agencies are part of the executive branch and under the control of the president. They usually support the president's policies. For example, the FBI, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, the IRS, and the Food and Drug Administration. Independent federal agencies are not part of the executive branch. The president does not have the power to fire the head of these agencies. Some examples of these agencies are the Environmental Protection Agency, the Securities and Exchange Commission, the Federal Communications Commission, National Labor Relations Board, and the Federal Trade Commission. It's ironic that the effect on our lives of administrative regulations is so pervasive, yet the process by which administrative agencies create their regulations is rarely before us. Can you remember the last time you saw a movie or TV drama where the protagonist delivered an impassioned speech to a regulatory board? It rarely happens. But you could make a good argument that we experience the work of administrative agencies more often than other lawmaking bodies. The Administrative Procedure Act was passed in 1946 to bring uniformity and control to many federal agencies. It regulates how federal agencies make rules, conduct investigations, hold meetings and hearings, and reach decisions and obtain and release information. There are two types of rules, legislative and interpretive. Legislative rules require that businesses and people act a certain way and have the effect of congressional statutes. Interpretive rules do not change the law. They define or apply the laws to new situations. There are three types of rulemaking. With informal rulemaking, the proposed rule must be published and the public should be allowed to comment on it. With formal rulemaking, they must hold a public hearing before establishing the rule. 
hybrid rulemaking uses elements of both of the above and perhaps the proposal and comment with cross-examination but not a full hearing. When an agency wants to investigate a business, sometimes the business freely complies and gives up whatever information they have. In some cases, however, subpoenas are given to a business in order to make them appear at a hearing and produce evidence, sometimes documents. The U.S. Product Safety Commission investigates hundreds of consumer products every year and urges a recall of products they consider dangerous. Agencies, of course, also have the power to subpoena, and they have the power to do a legal search of a business in order to take evidence of wrongdoing. This usually requires a warrant before they search. Some industries are closely regulated and may be searched at any time without warning. Agencies also have the power to adjudicate or hold a meeting to decide how to proceed with an issue. They hold a hearing before an administrative law judge. The parties have counsel, but there's no jury. It's informal, so both sides present evidence, and then a judge makes a ruling based on the testimony and the evidence. If either party is unhappy with the decision, the loser may appeal to an appellate board who may make a de novo decision and ignore the administrative law judge's decision, in which case the appeal would go to a federal court. The enabling legislation that created the agency places controls on it through requirements and restrictions. This is statutory control. The president has control over agencies through political pressure and through nominations of agency heads. This is a form of political control. Congress controls the budgets of agencies. They can eliminate funding for any program or an entire agency. Congress can also amend enabling legislation to place limits. In order to keep the system balanced, there are limits on agency power. A party injured by an agency decision is entitled to an appeal in a federal court after all appeal options are exhausted within the agency itself. The court must consider the facts as stated by the experts in the agency and the law as interpreted by the agency. Citizens are also protected by the Freedom of Information Act, which allows any citizen to request information from an agency. The Privacy Act prohibits agencies from giving information about a person to other agencies without their consent, although there are some exceptions to this rule. As I stated in the beginning of this chapter, the law is complex. The subject becomes less baffling, however, if we understand how society creates law. Congratulations, you made it through the end of Chapter 4.